Hey, good morning. Thank you for joining us for Church in the Woods. And uh, I'm going to tell you what, we have no shortage of mosquitoes here today. They are here. So we got the thermocell going. Sorry about this. I'm having to adjust the camera. But I uh, uh, got something on my heart this morning. And um, if you would, please hit the share button right now. Just share with some, just hit the share button, hit the like. Let me see some thumbs up if you're with me this morning. Let me see if you guys are with us. And and um, I got this thermocell pumping. Supposed to help us with the mosquitoes and as long as it stays lit but um i got something on my heart it's more it's more of a um a warning i would say uh what the lord has laid on my heart and when this ministry was called we were called um uh, through ezekiel 33 that's the scripture god gave us i appreciate the thumbs up so i see you guys are with us this morning um and so there's times when we may come off hard or we may come off judgmental. We are not trying to judge anybody, and we certainly don't want to be hard, but we want to be uh, sound a trumpet. I want to let people know what the Lord is showing me that could be a deception from the enemy, especially to, to the church. So if you would, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Hit the share button, and uh, please comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Um, love to see the places we're reaching, and and new places so comment where you're watching from we're we're uh, while we're waiting we are going to have a tent revival in benson north carolina october the 2nd at 804 south wall street in benson north carolina got a big uh pasture field there right outside of town or right in town actually right outside on the edge of town and that's old highway u.s highway 301 a lot of people know it as 301 but the address, GPS address, will be 804 South Wall Street, Benson, North Carolina. You'll see the, the big red and white tent um, when you come. October the 2nd, it'll be 7.30 nightly. And we're scheduled to go right now through the week. We may continue on. <clears throat> if the Lord is in it, we'll continue for another week. And we'll go from there, whatever God wants to do. My prayer is that it'll be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We'll have a true move of God that will spread. And uh, and so that's what we're praying for. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. And with the question, the thought, you can't eat from the devil's table while taking candy from the devil. Excuse me, you can't eat from the Lord's table while taking candy from the devil. Um, a lot of people try to eat from both tables. And some people are doing that and don't even know they're doing that. And, that, and that's what really is bothering me this morning. First Corinthians chapter 10. There's a whole lot here in this chapter, but I want to read one verse. Verse 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. That's as plain as it can get. And what Paul was addressing the church of Corinth, they were dabbling in idolatry. And they were had idolatrous. I don't know if I'm saying that right. They were dealing. They had idol worship and things in their homes, and and the things they were doing was idolatry. Now, when we think of idolatry, we think of uh, great big Buddha statues or or things like that. A good example um, would be we we did a tent revival in Cedar Creek, and there was a Hindu temple there, and God laid it on my heart to go to this Hindu temple and invite them to come to the tent revival. I didn't want to do it, didn't want to go, and, 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 and I just didn't want to do it. I'll be honest with you, but the Lord kept dealing with me about that. It was on a Wednesday, and we were going to start the tent revival that coming weekend. I went to this tent. This temple was huge. It was like a, just like a hotel. It was a huge building right off Highway 53 in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And when I went there, a priest answered the door, and he had a, a white towel around his waist, and that's it, with some limes or something around his neck. And spoke broken English, and I told him I wanted to invite the temple, the people there, to our tent revival, starting such and such, and blah, blah, blah. He says, come back tonight and tell everybody. And I thought, oh, my goodness, I don't want to come back tonight. But the Lord compelled me to do it. So long story short, we, me and my uncle came back. And when we walked into the temple, um, to, and, and from my understanding, Westerners are not allowed to, to speak in these temples. I don't know how a missionary tell me that. So it was all God. God opened all the doors. He opened the door for us to go into this temple. 
and it, they were burning incense and chanting and all that. But all around this, the walls was an altar full of statues, giant statues of, of an elephant with a bunch of arms and, and different figures. Some of them you've seen before. You, you, you can recognize you've seen in Hindu culture. And the, the priest wouldn't acknowledge us. He was cutting fruit and offering the fruit and water to these idols, to these golden images, while the people were chanting and, 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 and doing whatever they were doing. And this lady come up to us, very well spoken, and she's like, well, can I help you? And, and I told her that we were invited by the priest. And so she allowed me to speak to the, to, the, to the temple, the congregation, and I gave them my testimony. And God really moved because it was, it was just ordained of God for us to be there. My point is this. There are people that worship material things, um, golden images. Um, there's people that worship the forest. I, I ran into some, uh, some witches one time and, 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 and pagans, and they were together in this place. And we, I buy timber and land for a living. That's what I do. I, I, we have a timber company, and we were going to be cutting the timber. And this witch, this lady said she was a witch. She told me she's she's holding her ear. She's going, ah, ah. I was like, what, what, what's going on? She goes, I can hear the trees screaming as they're dying, you know. And I'm like, oh, boy. But uh, people worship all kind of different things. And so we we look at idolatry as, as, as people like that, right? Well, this is the warning. This is, this is what I want you to understand. You, you may be a professed Christian, saved, blood-bought, born-again believer, but you may be dealing with idolatry. You may be in idolatry and not even be aware. Because idolatry is not just about worshiping false gods, little g's. Idolatry also is about not worshiping the one true living God. Now, there's a, that's, that's very powerful. There are a lot of people that will say, I'm not going to worship a statue or a tree or something like that. But yet you worship yourself. You worship your job. You worship money. You you worship religion. You worship pornography, sex, things that you, you that you just you're in bondage to. That is idolatry. We look at it and we call it a lot of things, but when it's boiled down to it, it's idolatry. Now, why is this such a stronghold on Christians today? Because Satan wants to put us back in bondage. You are free when you're born again. I feel the Holy Spirit. You are so free. When God saves you, you have liberty. You have the spirit of the most high God living within you, and you have liberty. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, is liberty. However, the devil seeks to kill, steal, and destroy, and he is seeking a way to, to get you in bondage, put chains on you. And so there are a lot of Christians today that need deliverance. Now, look, I'm not one of these deliverance guys. Now, when I say that, I'm not disrespecting anybody. I don't believe in preaching deliverance and preaching healing and not preaching the gospel. And I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I'm just telling you where I stand. It's the gospel that is the, that we're to preach. It's the gospel, as me and a good friend of mine were talking the other day. The gospel brings deliverance. The gospel brings healing. The gospel brings the power of God into a service. You can preach the gospel to a bunch of believers, saved people, and they're going to be empowered and something's going to happen in their lives to rekindle that flame and have revival. It's the gospel. So my, my focus is the gospel no matter what. However, I do believe that there's a need for deliverance. I do believe that there's a need for healing physically, spiritually, mentally. And most of the time, if not all the time, those deliverance and, 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 and healings that people need is because of bondage that the enemy somewhere in their life has, allowed, has put on them. They fell into sin, they were tempted, and they went into this. And it comes down to becoming idolatry. The devil wants, has always wanted to be worshipped. He wants to be worshipped. He's jealous of God. He's envious, prideful. He, 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 he said, I'll sit in the place of God, or he thought he would, and God banished him from heaven. You have to understand that the devil's not concerned about wealth. He's not concerned about power, as, as a lot of these people in politics are. He has power. The Bible calls him the God of this world. So the devil is the one giving power to the wicked, evil ones in our society and politicians as well. Some of them are wicked as they can be. And that power is not coming from uh, 
us as coming from the enemy, the God of this world. And so the devil has power. You say, why would people worship the devil? Because they see power. They see things that demonstrate power. I believe that. Because he has power. But what he can't do, and what he has no power against, a blood-bought child of God, full of the Holy Ghost and power, that has liberty, walking in the liberty of the Holy Ghost, and being obedient to God, he can't do anything with them. He, there's, there's no strong, there's no uh, weak link there to get a stronghold in their lives. And so what he's constantly doing in the body of Christ, I believe, is trying to establish idolatry. If, if we, are, we are very weak vessels, we are very uh, easily misled because we deal with our flesh, we deal with our, our emotions, we're emotional beings. The enemy knows how to play on it. Look, we know how to play on that. We know how to say things to get what we want. We do. We, we know how to play the game. Well, how much more does the devil know how to play the game? How much more does he know how to work on our emotions and our thoughts and our desires? Somebody really wants something really bad, you dang a little, a little bit of candy there in front of them and say, well, you can have it if you'll do this. A lot of times people start gravitating to it and trying to say, well, if I'm not going to do that, how can I get around that to still get what I want? But see, what we don't understand is the enemy has already laid the path around that. He knows you're smart enough to recognize the bait, but what we don't recognize is the trap on the side trying to deviate around it. He's very crafty. He's smarter than you and me. He knows more than you and I do. He knows more about God as far as uh, the, the being in the presence of God than you and I probably do at this point, even full of the Spirit of God, because He was in heaven with God. And so with an enemy like that, who has an agenda to destroy you and me and our families, we have to be very careful of his ways and his deceptions. And idolatry is one of the greatest ones. There are people this morning <clears throat> that are in church that think because they are in a church building in a service somewhere that they are worshiping God. And I, <clears throat> I will say this, there are many churches that I believe personally, I believe this, I could be wrong, I believe there are many that people are worshiping in idolatry and not worshiping the true God. I believe that. I believe there are people that are in these churches that are being a part of the service and seeing the, 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 the things that are going on and they think I'm in a atmosphere of the worship of God and they got all these little goosebumps and they feel like they're in the right spot. None of that is biblical as, as far as are you in the right place. None of that you can go and say, well, the, the Word of God says I'll feel this way and the Word of God says this will happen and I know I'm in the right place. Jesus said when you worship God, it's in spirit and in truth. Idolatry, as, we, as I've mentioned, uh, if you walked into a place where there's great statues and you would leave, you'd say, I'm out, I'm not worshiping this. But if you're sitting in some of these services today, as we have in our country. And it's all about you. It's all about how you can benefit and how you feel and, and what we can do to make empower you and how we can make your life better. And it's all about you. You're the focus and center of the earth. Well, guess what, my friend? You're sitting in a service of idolatry. And if the worship, whether it be traditional worship or praise and worship, if it doesn't exalt Jesus Christ, it's idolatry. If it exalts man, it's idolatry because self is one of the greatest idols in our in our lives. Ourself. We put ourselves before God. All of us do. Now, there's some of y'all just going to say, well, bless God. And I, I see this and I never comment because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. There's always these super spiritual people that'll say, well, I, you know, I don't have that problem. I, I, I've been a Christian since blah, blah, blah. Look, there's a lot of I in what you say. Self. Exalting above of God is saying, good example, God's telling me in my spirit to go here, but I don't think I should do that. I think I should go there. Boom. That's it. It's, it's that easy. You, you've made yourself an idol. It's, it's what I want and not what God wants. <clears throat> we have to be very careful. Many people look at family as idols or possessions, religion. I mentioned that. They, you know, Many people in these churches today, and I'm not bashing churches, but I'm being honest. I don't care. I, I finally have reached a liberty, y'all. I, I was sharing this with Ben yesterday, Ben Coleman, the, the guy that we do the Revelation Hour. 
I struggled for a long time with not being affiliated with a denomination, not being under the umbrella. And I've got close friends and that I trust and I love that'll tell you know well, you need accountability, you need accountability. And and I, I I'm like okay, I'm thinking, but God has always kept me in a place where I'm accountable to Him, and and in a place where I cannot be associated with one particular denomination. I'm not bragging. I'm not saying I'm special or nothing dumb like that. I'm just being honest with you. There have been many times when I wanted to be associated with a certain denomination. But what I've discovered, finally, thank the Lord, I've, 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 I've accepted this, that the ministry that we're called to is different. It's just different. That's why I'm standing in the woods this morning. We're not supposed to be in a church somewhere. We're not supposed to be associated with a denomination in particular because then there'd be a an umbrella of power over me. There'd be control over me. And there would be things that I should do and shouldn't do on me. And so we have to understand that even in denominations, even in these things that seem on the surface seem really good, if people are not careful, can become idolatry. Because they could say, well, I'm going to stick with my kind, as I heard one preacher say. I'm going to stick with my kind. I'm, I'm this denomination or I'm that denomination. It's not biblical. And that has become an idol to that person. We have to be very careful. Attending church does not necessarily mean that you're worshiping the one true living God. Check yourself. What, who are you worshiping? Why are you there? What are you? What is your purpose? Where is your heart at? If, and I'm just going to lay this out there. If you can go to a church or, or watch somebody like me or, or any, doing a, a service, and there's no conviction. There's no, uh, you don't feel the Spirit of God dealing with your heart. That's a sign that you may be in the wrong place or you may be ignoring God trying to deal with your heart. It could be you and not the place you're at. I'm not trying to paint a picture of everybody. But the Word of God is sharp and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing asunder and dividing even soul and spirit. When the Word of God is being preached, you're going to have a reaction to it. Many churches today, many many religious functions have become glorified social gatherings. And what it comes down to is people are eating from the table of the devil. I'm just being bold and honest. They're getting, their, their flesh is being fed. This It's all about them. It's all about emotions. Very little, if any, worship of the one true living God is going on. I'm not saying all churches, but there's many. Uh, there's there, and, and not just buildings. I'm talking about just gener in general. You can watch it on TV or Facebook. And there is a movement that it's about you. It's about what you can get. And we see a lot of these false prophets that are being exposed today um, on, on their, their wealth and what they really are about is a prosperity gospel. We have to be very careful because as, as, as obvious as that is to a lot of us that that's, that's, that's wrong, a lot of people have no clue. A lot of people believe it and think that it's, it's, it's biblical. It's because they're deceived, and we have to be careful. Many, many social gatherings today are about encouraging one another, but there's little exalting of Jesus Christ. Lord, help me to say this, and I don't want to be in the flesh, but I'm gonna be. I'm, I'm just gonna be honest. When I was living like a sinner, uh, even though I fall short of glory of God all the time, so let me back up on that. Before I was, before I was a preacher, and before I was, before I was saved, I loved gathering in social gatherings, not in churches. I got to move this third myself, not. Not for ice cream socials, not for friend day, or um, have a big singing. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to drink beer and and chase women. I mean, if that was going on at the church, I'd have went. I'm just being, I'm, I, why would I want to do a social gathering with a bunch of people that I thought most of them were probably hypocrites anyway? What's that about? That's being real. But there are people 
that ha have a, they have to have that. They have to have that interaction and that social, social gathering thing. Here's the deal. If it's not exalting Jesus Christ, if it's exalting you and, and your flesh, you might as well be at the club. You might as well be. It, it, you say, well, it's a church building, and bless God, that God ain't, he's not waiting for you to show up there. Do you realize God's in the club just as much as he's in the church building this morning? Do you know that? When you rolled up in the club down in Myrtle Beach, and you're in there having a big time, do you realize God's on the dance floor? God's in the bathroom. God's on the outer deck. God's walk on the beach out there. God's everywhere. You can't escape him. He's not held up in church building. A lot of church folk are. A lot of church folk are held up in them, hoping the world don't come in. God's like, he's out there. It's the most powerful services I've ever been a part of and seen God move has been on the street in homeless missions where they don't give a flip about anything dealing with uh, church. They just want some food and God moving powerfully to show himself, show them who he is. They're in bondage, they're addicted, a lot of them, drugs. Some of them are just down on their luck. But when it comes down to it, if I'm going to gather for a social gathering, I want to be, and I'm speaking for me personally, if I'm going to go where it's social, I don't care about your boss and butts. I don't care about your ice cream. I don't care about let's all gather and go do something. I want to be where the power of God is, where God's moving. And... People are getting right with God and, and the power of God. So now, look, I know I'm being hard, and I know a lot of people are probably thinking, well, you're wrong. I may be wrong. I'm not trying to, I'm not saying I'm 100%. I'm just being honest with you. I'm telling you how I feel. I'm not attracted to social gatherings. I'm not attracted to that. It doesn't draw me. What draws me is when I see God is moving here and doing something. I want to be in his presence. I want to be where he's moving and I believe that we can all be a part of that in a social gathering, whether it be in a uh, service or, or some kind of social gathering, whatever it may be, if we're exalting Jesus Christ from our hearts with our mouths and our heart. And see, that here's the issue, though. Jesus said <clears throat> people honor him with their lips, but their hearts are far from him. God always looks at the heart. And that idolatry, that idol, that I, that self worship that's in your heart, or could be in your heart, is a is a an insult to God. It's sinning against God, and the devil really knows how to get us to that place. Romans fourteen thirteen says, "Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way." I'm glad I put that scripture. The Lord led me to put that scripture in there because. Another form of idolatry is when people, we, a license to sin. People think because you're saved, because you've been born again, grace, that now you can just sin. You can, hey, you're good to go. You got your ticket. You might not say that. But you, 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 I have seen, I have known preachers that were on fire for God, but that were questioning a lot of things. When I talked to them, I could tell they were questioning a lot. And later on, I don't know if it's because of talking to somebody or going down a different path, they become very slack in their walk with God. And, and they believe that grace is, covers everything. I'm good. Grace. I got saved. I got grace. I'm good. I can, I can do whatever I want to do. They believe that. And it's a form of idolatry. They have, they have created this false God in their head. They have a concept of God that is not real. They say, God is going to just overlook all my sin because I've been saved. I'm good. God's going to let me, it, it, there's nothing nothing that I have to do worry about anymore. I, I finally have liberty. I've learned to just trust God. Really? Well, here's the problem with that. Your concept of God, your understanding of Him is based on some liberal theology that you picked up somewhere or that you've even developed yourself and you have this concept of God that is not biblical. Because if your God that you call your God whether you call yourself a Christian or whatever, if your concept of God and who your God is is contrary to what this says, then you're in idolatry. You're worshiping a false God, one that you've created in your own heart and your own mind. There are many people today that are sitting on church pews that are worshiping a God that they've created. They'll still make statements like, well, 
My God wouldn't cast people into hell for that. My God wouldn't do this. My God wouldn't do that. But my friend, you need to understand something. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. God has given you, us his word. He's given us anointed preachers to preach the word. He's told us how things should be. Biblically, how a church should be structured. Biblically, how things should be handled. He has showed us from beginning to the end who he is. There'll be no excuse when we stand before God. There'll be no excuse. There'll be without excuse. God has given us grace. He's given us mercy. And, and it's abundant. His, his, where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. But nowhere in the word of God are you going to find or be able to demonstrate to anyone, including yourself, that God has said, you know what? I've forgiven you. Go live like hell. Go go do everything you want to do. Go, go, go back to living that lifestyle. You're good. You're good. That's what these false, demon-possessed preachers will tell you because all they care about are numbers, big buildings, big ministries, prosperous. Their idea of prospering spiritually is a growing church instead of people being born again and spirit-filled believers. That's spiritual prosperity is when people's lives are being changed, when people are being born again and people are being filled with the Spirit of God, not your bank account. And so what happens is you, people get so consumed and believe that these false preachers are telling them and, and they want you, your flesh wants to believe that anyway. It's, there's a battle. There's a struggle. We struggle against spiritual wickedness in high places. And it's against our flesh. It's against our feelings. And many people today are trying to eat from the Lord's table. And you're stuffing your pockets full of candy from the devil. And you, it's not going to work. You cannot prosper spiritually that way. It's not going to work. You say, what does that mean when you say eating, meat, uh, eating from God's table and stuffing your face full of candy, your pocket full of candy from the devil? I'm going to tell you what it means. God, the Holy Ghost, when he's dealing with you and through the word of God or through the real preaching of the word of God, will correct you. It will center you back focused on what it's about it's about jesus and jesus alone that's that's the holy ghost has come to exalt christ it's always about jesus the devil will feed you this candy of flesh that says eh, it's about your best day now Here, here's 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 some candy it's, it's about you you should you should get your promotion um here's some candy you should be able to sin all week and sit in service and you finally found a place where you feel comfortable here's here's some candy oh yeah they're passing the candy out of the devil. The devil's candy is going out everywhere. What's going to happen, my friend, when you take that last breath, when your heartbeat stops, and that fake preacher is not going to be there to stand beside you? All the people that you were sitting with eating that candy from the devil's table is not going to be there with you? You're going to stand before God alone and give account of yourself alone. If you're convicted right now and you feel in your heart that God is speaking to you, that you are on the wrong path or you're doing the wrong thing, don't be angry. I'm just a messenger. Call out to Jesus Christ and ask him to save you and deliver you from this bondage. The deception, you have been lulled asleep. The enemy has caused you to come to a place of complacency and apathy and you're asleep. And God says, I'm waking you up. I'm opening your eyes. I'm pulling back the scale as the book of Revelation. The Revelation means the unveiling. He's opening your eyes that you can see. We're in the last days. The last day deception is the greatest deception of all. We understand that all these prophetic things are happening all around the world and we can see things are happening. The feast of the trumpets and we can, we can see that the, the red heifers are in Israel. We can see they want to build a temple and they're having a, they're getting ready to have a meeting for a seven year, um, thing they're doing for the, all the world governments is coming. All this stuff's in the, in the horizon and all these people are saying, come Lord, come. We can't wait. Jesus, come get us. But they don't give up flip about lost souls all they care about is their stinking building that's going to burn up one day all they care about is their self how can i get what i want from god where's our passion for lost souls where's our passion for people that can't do anything for you they can't give you anything back they're hopeless they're in great despair where's our passion to go and reach those souls that's the number one thing that should be on a Christian's heart is how in the, how can I share my faith 
with someone I come in contact with for the glory of God. Then it becomes about Jesus Christ and not about myself. And that, my friend, again, I'm guilty of it. You're guilty of it. Every one of us are guilty of this from time to time, putting ourselves before God, which is idolatry. We should, Jesus taught us, he said, it's, may, he made no bones about it. He said, when you, when you come to me, you're going to have to die. You're going to have to follow me. Take up your cross. He, he didn't play around. He didn't say, hey, it's going to be great. Oh, it's going to be great. You know, <clears throat> Jesus didn't ride around in a, on the nicest camel. He didn't have silk clothes and live in the fancy mansions. If there would have been planes, he wouldn't have had a private jet flying from Jerusalem over to this side so he could preach a little bit and, and then have his uh, entourage with him. No. But yet some of these preachers do. Some of these so-called men of God do. And they teach people that that's what God wants for everybody. It's a lie. It's a lie. And it's idolatry. And they're so deceived in it, they believe it. They believe it themselves, and they're damned. And if they don't repent and get right with God, <clears throat> then they may hear the Lord say, Depart from me. I never knew you. Take heed <clears throat> by means that take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block for them that are weak. Now what does that mean? We're talking about idolatry. We're talking about eating from the Lord's table while stuffing your can't your pockets full of the candy of the devil or eating from the devil's table too. You can't do both. The Bible says you can't serve two masters. You'll cling to one, you'll hate the other. But there is a thing called liberty and grace. And if God has given you liberty with something, grace. And I, I you know what? I'm just going to be on. I, I'm, well, I'm always trying to be honest, but I, I'm going to be real with you. <clears throat> if you have liberty to do a certain thing, and, and between you and God, and you know without a shadow of a doubt, God doesn't have a problem with it. Um, maybe smoking a cigar. I'm going I'm I'm to say that. Uh, there are people, if you smoke a big old fat stogie once a week, there are people who say, well, you're, you're a sinner. You know, there are people like that. But who cares what they think? What, does, what, is, what is God speaking to you? Is, is that wrong? Are you doing something wrong? Are you, and before all these people jump on there and say, well, your body's the temple and you're, yes, it is. Gluttonous people. Yes, it is. Those that are overweight. Let's just be real. If we're going, hey, if we're going to be real, we're going to be real. <clears throat> My point is this. If you have liberty to smoke a cigar and you sit around on your back porch once or twice a week and smoke a cigar or, or whatever it is, I just picked a cigar. And you have no conviction and you're right with God and it doesn't hinder your walk with God. Who am I to tell you anything? That's between you and God. However, if I'm someone that has a problem with smoking or somebody has a problem with cigars or, 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 or anything, like, or, or maybe I'm someone that would view that as a stumbling block and it would hurt your testimony, your witness, then you don't need to do that in front of me. You need, to, you need, you need not be a stumbling block. And, and the first thought you may have is, well, I don't see you nothing wrong with it. I can do it. Um, I don't under prefer your brother. Because when you put yourself above them, then you, you're slipping into idolatry again. You see what I'm saying? Your liberty has become an idol. Everything we do should be done for the glory of God. If you can smoke a cigar for the glory of God, that's you. That's between you and God. But if it's a, something that's going to cause a stomach block, if I, if I enjoyed a cigar or something like that, um, I'm not going to sit here and smoke in front of y'all. Because there are somebody, somebody's going to see it and say, and it's going to hurt my testimony to them. It's going to make, it's going to be a stomach block. That's what the scripture is talking about. If you have liberty with something, if you have uh, something that God has given you liberty and you don't feel convicted of it and it's between you and God, that's between you and God. However, if it's a stumbling block for a brother or sister, you are not to do it to where it becomes a stumbling block to them. I know I'm all over the place, but I'm just following the Lord on this. If we're not careful, even the things that we believe we have liberty with can become an idol. 
if we exalt it above the Lord and what his purpose is for our lives. And God's purpose for our lives is that we be a witness for him. Above everything else, we're to be a witness for Jesus Christ. The number one thing that we have to be aware of when it comes to serving the Lord is that there is a real enemy out there who wants to be served and worshipped. He, he, he wants that worship to pointed toward him. And he's very crafty. He's very deceptive. And he's in a lot of churches today. He's in a lot of people that call themselves preachers today. And there's a great deception. I don't say that with any joy, and I don't say that with any uh, animosity. I say that as a warning. Make sure, starting with me, because you're listening to me right now, that I'm in the Word of God. If I'm not in the Word of God, correct me, uh, because I want correction. I don't want to mislead anybody. I don't want to 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 tell somebody wrong, because not not because I, I want you to like me, not because I want you to oh, well, you know he, he no. I want to be right with God. Preaching is a fearful thing to me. Preaching is a serious thing because I know that when we stand before God, we give account of every idle word, everything we've ever said and thought. And I want to make sure that I'm in His will. Beware eating from God's table while trying to take candy from the devil. Beware of thinking you're eating from God's table, but you're being shoveled in a bunch of sugar bunch of candy that's not meat of it's not the meat of God's word but it's just sweets from the devil's table be careful if it does not line up with the word of God if the structure of that leadership is not biblical get get out get away if they don't handle things according to the word of God get away if they don't preach the word of God get away if the worship is not biblical Exalting Jesus Christ in spirit and in truth. Get away. And I'm going to say this in closing. I, I went to Kentucky during the Asbury Revival and I visited that. I've heard about the Auburn uh, thing that's broken, broken out where people are being baptized. Believe me, folks, I'm all for real revival. I'm all for an outpouring. And I believe that revival, true, a true awakening in our country will probably come through the, the young people. But be careful. Be very careful. I wasn't in Auburn. I don't know what was preached, if it was preached. I don't. I, I went to Asbury, and I can tell you I didn't hear the gospel preached. I heard a bunch of feel-good stuff being said, but I also seen powerful worship. For me personally, I believe God is seeking people to worship Him in spirit and in truth. So I believe worship is a way that I know is a way that the Spirit of God comes into a place and, and the more we exalt Jesus Christ, the more powerful that place is going to be and, and that, that God's presence is going to be strong. I 100% know this and believe this and it's biblical. However, when you hear that people are being baptized because they were in a worship service and so they wanted to be baptized, which is what started that thing in Auburn, the football player wanted to be baptized, I don't know. If somebody shared the gospel with him, I don't know if he heard the gospel in the praise and worship. I weren't there. That's between him and God. But here's what I'm trying to say. Being baptized, if somebody baptized you and you haven't received Jesus Christ, when you come out of that water, you're just a wet sinner. You, you, there's nothing changed in your life. I know there's preachers that will mark a great service by baptism. That has, that has nothing to do with what has happened. Baptist, let me back up. It does in this sense. If somebody's being baptized because they've been born again or they're recommitting their life and they feel that they need to be baptized or they've never been baptized, yes. But to be in a worship service and you haven't heard the gospel preached and there's no conviction, there's no repentance where you turn from sin and you turn to Christ, but yet you want to be baptized because you think somehow that will make you right with God, but then you go right back out the way you come, nothing's happened. It's a glorified social gathering. Idolatry. I say that not, I'm not accusing that of anybody because I, I wasn't at Auburn. I'm not accusing that. I, I believe, as far as I can see, that it's, it's amazing. Praise God. But there's something in me 
that bothers is stirring me, be careful. Be careful. Because we want a move of God so bad in this country. Christians do. Now, now lost people don't. These wicked people, they want Christians to be gone. And we will be soon when the rapture comes. But we as Christians are so um, desperate to see God demonstrate power and change things. The enemy knows this. And if he can create a movement where the gospel's not preached, there's no repentance, it's just a feel-good time of praise and worship, self-exalting worship on top of that. The music doesn't exalt Jesus but self. And you can have an emotional experience and say, well, I need to be baptized or I, I need to go to the altar. And, but nothing happens spiritually. You don't repent. You don't turn from your sins. People are not changed. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. One reason I'm so passionate about this, one reason I'm so bold, and I don't care who it offends, as long as I'm in the Word of God, that was me. I was one of those that was baptized, that said a prayer, and lived like hell. That was me. And I know I was on my way to hell. And I know God, the Holy Ghost, arrested me one day and convicted me and showed me who I was and that I needed to repent and be born again. That is the message of the gospel. Jesus Christ died on a cross for you. His blood was shed. It was an awful price he paid for our sins. He was made to be sin. Who knew no sin? That we might be made the righteousness of God. He looked at Christ and put my sin on his son and said, I'm going to give you my son's righteousness. I didn't deserve it. You don't deserve it. It's grace God did this. And when God does this, it's a supernatural thing that happens in your heart. It's not lip service. It's in the heart. So if that young man was a football player at Auburn, he was baptized. If he received Jesus Christ and has gone serving Christ, praise God for it. It was all worth it, whatever happened there for one soul. But if he was dumped and come out and he's doing the same, ain't nothing changing his life, my friend, that's, that's where we're at in the world. And it's, we need to be, un, again, I'm torn when I talk about this because I want to see this. I want to see an awakening. I want to see a move of God sweep our country. I want to see that. If it, I'll run to it. I went to Kentucky. I wanted to see. I wanted to be in it. But when I got there, I saw a lot of worship. And I didn't, didn't hear the gospel being preached. The worship's true. When people are worshiping Jesus Christ and exalting him. But at some point in there, the gospel needs to be preached. Men need to hear that their sins have condemned them. Men and women need to hear that they're separated from God by their sins. And that their sin, our sin, cost God everything. He gave his son for us that we could be forgiven. It, 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 people say, well, it, salvation's free. It is for us. But it wasn't for God. He had to pay for our sins. He, he, we were bought with a price by the blood of the Lamb of God. When you have the real thing and you know you got the real thing, your worship's true because you worship Jesus saying, Lord, you delivered me. You saved me. Oh, right, vile, wretched sinner as I was, you love me and you've forgiven me. And I have the righteousness of God upon me. And I feel the Holy Spirit in me. And I'm a child of the Most High God. That's something that only God can do through someone that repents and receives Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. I'm going to ask you this morning, have you repented of your sins and asked Christ to save you and put your faith in Him and His finished work on the cross? I'm not asking you if you've been baptized. I'm not asking you if you've said a sinner's prayer. I'm asking you right now. I'm, being, I'm looking at you, whoever it is. <clears throat> Do you know without a shadow of a doubt that God has forgiven you and that you're a child of God? Or do you hope you are? Or do you say, I think I am? You can make, make sure today and you can know without a shadow of a doubt. God loves you. God loves you with an everlasting love and with loving kindness. He's drawing you to himself. God doesn't want you to 
walk in fear. He doesn't want you to walk in shame. He wants you to walk in love and power in his forgiveness and his mercy. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to you today and the way he speaks to us, you feel God drawing you and you know that you're lost or you know you need to repent. Right now, wherever you're at, say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I've sinned against you. Please forgive me. I believe you died on a cross for me. I believe that your blood, when it's splattered on the ground, was for my sins, to pay for my sins. I believe you died in my place. And I believe that the Father raised you up again on the third day. And by faith, I receive you as my Savior. And I'm going to follow you for the rest of my life. I give my life to you. If you have spoke to God this morning from your heart, and you know without a shadow of a doubt you're forgiven, and God has touched you, I want you to type in right now, I am just one. Just type in, I am just one. You say, what is just one? We come down here and do these videos to reach one person. The Bible says, Jesus said, there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repents more than 99 that need no repentance. That one person, he's come to seek and to save the lost. If you've made a decision for Christ today, and you know the Lord has spoke to you and you have peace, type in, I am just one. And we're going to message you. We're going to uh, send you a free Bible and some literature to help you get started on your Christian walk. It won't cost you a dime. We just caught, we'll message you, get your address, and send it to you. Because we want to encourage you today. People give to this ministry. It doesn't cost you a dime. We'll send you some literature if you made that decision for Christ. Another reason I ask you to type in I am just one is make it public. Make it public. Christ was not ashamed of you when he died on the cross. He was not ashamed of you. He loves you today. Don't be ashamed of him. I am just one if you made a decision for Christ today and we'll message you and send you that package of literature today to help you get started on your Christian walk. Christian, if you've been touched by this, and you've re recommitted yourself to God, you felt broken through this somewhere, and God spoke to your heart, and you asked him to forgive you. First John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you have done that this morning, will you make a, a, a public profession of that and saying, I'm a child of God, and I asked the Lord, I, I've got back right with God. I was backslid or I was complacent, but that I, I'm, I'm on the right track, and I'm going to, I'm going to keep following the Lord Jesus Christ, and I've asked him to forgive me. If that's you, I want you to type in, I am just one coming home. I am just one coming home. And what you're doing is you're publicly acknowledging Jesus Christ has spoke to you today. That you're a child of God, but you've recommitted your faith to him. And make that a, something that you, it's a, it's a declaration today. I'm, I'm recommitting my life to the Lord. I haven't been living the way I should. I know time is short. God has spoke to me and I've gotten I've asked him to forgive me and I'm I'm going to serve him like I originally said I would I am just one coming home and then we, we, we won't message you we'll know you're a child of God when you put I am just one coming home you're just publicly acknowledging your decision but if you're just got saved today receive Jesus Christ you type in I am just one and we'll message you today and get your address and send you that literature God bless you today thank you for sticking with me um Please be in prayer for the upcoming revival October 2nd at Benson, 804 South Wall Street, Benson, North Carolina. Starts at 7.30 p.m. nightly. Jason Wickline from West Virginia, Keith Wren, local friend of mine, are going to be leading worship along with some people that um, that uh, I think a church is involved. Union Grove Church is, is uh, going to be there one night or two nights maybe. Um, and it's just going to be a good time in the Lord. But look, it ain't about who's coming. It ain't about names. It's about Jesus. And if it's not about Jesus, it's a waste of time. God bless you today. We'll see you, Lord willing. If he hasn't come back, if we're if we're still here, if we haven't been raptured out of here, me and Ben Coleman, we'll see y'all Tuesday night at uh, 8 o'clock for Revelation Hour. But I'm praying that if I see you, it won't be Tuesday night. It'll be in heaven when we're took out of this place. Let the words of our mouths, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in his sight. O oh, Lord, our strength and our name. Please share.